Hi there, and thank you for clicking. Today, we're gonna to be talking about why most barbershop, salon, and spa owners are feeling stuck in their business and what you can do about it. So the first topic we're gonna talk about is goals. Then we're gonna talk about plan, mindset, money, burnout, and out of control. So there's six topics that I, I'm gonna be talking about and I broke, them, I broke them down into points. So the first topic is goals. And when I talk about goals, I mean realistic goals. When I talk to owners, a lot of owners say like, oh, my goal is to get 50 to 100K or my plan is to get a second location or I really want to have this much money in my bank account. And they don't actually have minute goals when it comes to hitting small plateaus in their business. So if your business is making between five to 10K, then your, your first goal would be to getting to 20K or 15K. It wouldn't be getting to 50K. Like, yeah, maybe that's an overall goal, but you need to talk about what the next step goal would be. Like, hey, I'm between five, let's say you're at 5K, your goal would be to get to 10K. And I want you to realize that you shouldn't aim for 50K. If you're at 5K, you should not aim for 50K. You should be aiming for 10K. You need to know because when people try to go and aim for 50K, the things that amount to get there is very hard and very high to do. So you need to aim in plateaus and know what you need to do at each plateau. And a lot of owners don't know what they need to do to add in gradually. So all they think is, okay, I'm at 5K. I'm like, well, how do I get to 50K? So the first thing I would do is like, let's say you're at 5K in your business or 10K or even at 20K and you're trying to hit that next goal is how many clients do you need in the business? And this relates to pricing as well. And the two go in hand in hand, but let's say you're by yourself in the chair and you're doing the work and it's not how many clients can you fit? It's how many do you want to be servicing at the price that you want to be servicing at them? Once you have that, and then you have a team, it's like, okay, you kind of figure out your pricing, you kind of kind of figure out the market. How can I increase pricing? What can I do to increase pricing? What can I do to make clients like mold the business a little bit around uh, setting up the clients and their appointments to make it smoother and pricing them out. So I have the staff and, and it kind of interrelates with each other. So you need to know wherever you are in your business, let's say you're at 5k, you're working on yourself, then you should be working on getting to 10k. But let's say you have a team. It's like, how can I manage my team better? So they're handling more clients, they're putting in the right prices that I want to be charging. And they have the staff, like how much staff I need on the days that I need them what, what does that look like? So you need to set out goals, realistic goals, and you need to understand your business. So most owners don't really understand their business. They don't understand their model. They don't look at the numbers well enough. And this is the problem. So setting realistic goals is probably going to pull you out of a rut. And then finally, the products within there, like how many products do I want each of my staff selling? Am I selling products? If you're starting out, you're probably not selling products as you grow into a bigger spot you probably are selling products. You really just want to focus on the goals. When you have goals, you can really focus. You have a direction that you kind of want to go in. And then everything else, like starting a second business, running multiple things should be noise because this is the main goal that you have on your plate. So I really think that having the right goals that you're trying to achieve is important. Number two is your plan your plan to execute those goals. How many tasks do you need to do? How much money is it going to take? How much time am I going to need to put in? What is my marketing going to look like? Having a plan in order to hit those goals is important. And a lot of owners don't have a plan. So you don't have goals, you don't have plan, you know, then you're kind of lost. That's why you're stuck. If I told you, just, you know, get to 50k, you would be kind of not you would be in like this uh, paralysis, analysis, analysis paralysis. So having small bite-sized goals and then having a small plan and then achieving those and having mini victories will pull you out of a rut. Like when you go to a gym and you lose the first couple pounds, it's like, I want to lose 50 pounds. But if I lose five pounds, that's a victory. So I want you to think about the small wins, not the big wins. And that way it will kind of motivate you as you get your small wins to get to the big win and it'll be less further away than it is. 
Third is your mindset. The mindset is practically one of the most important things you can do. Most owners burn themselves out, and we'll talk about burnout later, um, but their mindset, they don't work on their mindset. They are sometimes in a rut and they're very negative. They're bringing negative energy when they should be bringing positive energy and they really need to take the time for themselves. I don't mean like go on vacation, but really take the time to reflect on where you are and what you want. And when it comes to your health and family, that's important too. Like you have to work on this balance and it's a little bit of a balancing act, you know, having a business and having friends, family, making time for them is important. You can't, and even when it comes to purchasing things, you kind of need to splurge on yourself a little bit because you need to feel like you're not stuck in your life, but you also need to know that you need to spend on the business. So when you're spending this kind of money and things and time on yourself, it's a huge balancing act and you kind of need to like uh, have that kind of little bit planned out in your head and then having positive energy so that the business isn't draining your soul. And I use that as a like, you know, most owners might feel like the the business is draining them. They, they, they constantly like, okay, all my energy is going to this business. I have no energy for everything else that I want. So it's kind of like this little healthy balance that you do a little bit. And we all have to make sacrifices. Sacrifices is very, very important. And we'll talk about sacrificing, but it's also, you shouldn't sacrifice your health, your family, and your mind, okay? Know that it will come within time. Okay. And some people want it so urgent that they're willing to sacrifice their health, but I don't think you should do that. I think you should know that you're making the steps and just do it at your own pace. So I put money as my number four topic. I think money is important. Um, a lot of owners don't have their money, right? They don't spend on the knowledge that they need to be spending on. They don't have the technical online skills, when it comes to marketing, when it comes to the, you know, emailing and everything that they need to do, they don't spend more on just getting the technical skills on working on the client and working on the business. So just having the knowledge and technical skills is important. So A and B kind of go in together. Then they make a very, they make a lot of bad investments with their money. And why do I say bad investments? Because you got to understand when you're making priorities, when you spend money, you make certain things a priority. The way you spend money is what you're prioritizing on. So if you prioritize your personal life over your business, it will show. And sometimes you make bad investments into other businesses when you should be focusing on the one business. So I see a lot of owners make bad investments or even on their business, they buy things that they shouldn't be buying because the business is not even making that much. So really bad investments and too much spending on your personal life. You need to be spending, a, when you're trying to grow the business, you shouldn't be splurging. You should be having a budget. Some owners don't set themselves a budget. Like you literally need a budget on what you can afford and be realistic. If you see the numbers and you see your expenses and you see everything out in front of you, you should have a realistic budget and I know a lot of owners don't like doing the numbers. They don't like looking at the math. They don't like doing that stuff, but you should. Like you need, it's what's going to make you understand how much money your business is gonna really need to take. And, and that ties into the marketing. If you don't know how much money you need to spend on marketing and you're not saving and you're not, you're making bad investments and you're not, and you're spending too much on the personal, then you're not spending on the marketing, the accounting, the real people. And you're kind of discounting those people when you should be paying them what they're worth because the business needs it. And you probably want to hire the best talent when you're hiring staff and you're being like cheap on paying them. Then you get really like you don't get the best. You want the best in the business sometimes in your spot. So when you're hiring your staff and you're being cheap on your business front, but you're splurging on your personal life it, it, to them, they're going to be like, yeah, but you should be paying me what I'm worth instead of like splurging on the personal side. So I see a lot of owners do that. Um, no savings. So this one is a big one when it comes to why am I feeling stuck is because you don't know how to save. Um, savings affects your mindset, how much money you have in the bank. Um, it's a big factor when it comes to making decisions. Let's say I had 50,000 in the bank 
and I'm going to make a decision to fire somebody because I got to let somebody go or I got to hire somebody. If I have money in the bank, that decision is a lot easier. It's a lot stress, a lot less stress. And I'm feeling I'm thinking more clearly and I have a lot more clarity in my, in my thought. So if you have money in your bank account and you just save it in there, it's going to shift the dynamic in your mind to make better decisions. So if you can save some money, whatever money you can, just call it like safety money. Don't spend it. Like have like 10K there, 5K there, whatever is that safety net so that when you make a decision, you have this money to kind of lean on just in case something was to happen. And I'll use it a lot in my business to say, okay, I don't want to work with this client. I don't want to do this. I don't need that because, and then when I do that, I bring healthier things into my business because I have that safety net there. And accounting is a big one too. The accounting is most owners don't look at their accounting. They don't look at their numbers. They don't see what they're paying everybody. They don't do the number crunching. They really hate the numbers. You really have to look at the numbers and understand what you're paying in taxes, what you're paying to everybody and what you make at the end of the day. And you can't just be like going, taking cash all the time. You really, un and you know, it's not about cheating anybody. It's about being realistic and just being upfront with the numbers. So number five is burnout. I see this a lot with owners, why they're feeling in a rut, their body's hurting, they work too much. So that they're taking on way too many clients, way too many clients for the cheap prices. And then they burn their body out. They break their body in order to make a couple extra bucks. Think about it. If you're trying to live till 80 to 100, you know, you're not here to work in life. You're here to enjoy life and to have a balance. If you're burning out your body to make a few extra bucks, don't you think that's not going to be worth it when you become 50 and you're sitting and you're like paralyzed because you just put all this onus on your body. So you need to figure out where that burnout level is to client ratio. And again, it goes with health. It goes with everything, but this is a big subject when owners put a toll on their body. And when you put a toll on your body, you're going to pay that toll later. So just know that don't try to stress your body out. Your body will tell you and it will kind of fight you back when you're trying to abuse it. So a lot of owners put too much work in. They hurt their body. They they just don't have enough energy. It all compiles and it'll start to you'll start to see the signs. You're like, oh, I will just take a day off here and, and you know, eventually be paying a lot of doctor bills. That's all I'm going to say. Once you hit 40, those doctor bills, those chiropractor bills, you really don't want to fit as many clients in as possible. You really want to focus on how many clients can I handle? What's good for my health? And I, everybody has that. And you really need to be pricing. Again, it's all related. It is all combined to what can you handle? What is good for you? What is good for your body? What the business needs? And just having these goals, plans, mindset, money, and then this burnout really all ties in together. So it, you really want to keep your motivation there. You want to keep it strong to keep pushing. You want to be disciplined and motivated, and you don't want to be moving backwards. A lot of owners move backwards. And once they move a little bit backwards, they start to get into this like downhill fall. And you can see the, the, like it starts tumbling. People start quitting. They say like, where did the business go? It's because everything the owner people are seeing your energy in the business seeing your motivation and if you start having lack of there you know other people will feel that and they'll start to move backwards from you and move away from the business and maybe go where they feel the energy is better and the last one is out of control so there is things out of your control that might affect you that might put you in a rut but just know that no matter what there's always something going on so it could be, you know, a new competitor opens up, it could be inflation, it could be repairs, it could be there, there's always something better. But if you keep working towards your goals, you will hit them. You know, when you set out the goals, and you set them a little bit higher than usual, like you, okay, you, let's say you want to hit 50k. And you know, you got to hit 10k, like 10, 50k could be your ultimate goal, or 100k or owning two shops, like you already know that. But you just need to know that you need to focus on these baby steps and you might hit setbacks. And a lot of these setbacks are out of your control, but just know that you have to go through them. They're like tests in your business, whether you're going to endure them. A lot of owners don't endure them well. They say, oh, you know, 
this is affecting, they play a lot of the victim. And when you play a victim coming to this out of things, out of control, like, oh, this affected me. Like I know a lot of owners quit when these things happen to them and they blame these things instead of taking onus on, you know, just improving it and working towards those plateaus, improving the task. They just rather play the victim and stop everything and just say, hey, I can't improve this. Nothing's working. Nothing's going to work. You know, I've tried everything and they just really feel stuck in that point. So having all these things ahead, when things are out of control happen to you, you don't get stuck. So that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, like, share. And if you like other videos, just click there. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your week.